Good morning, all of you. Today we have with us directors of the feature films in the Indian Panorama sections of the 49th International Film Festival of India. We have the directors, uh, Mr. Jairaj, uh, with the movie Bhayanakam. We have uh, uh, Kama Kenarayan Singh of the movie Bhor. We have uh, uh, Mr. Nibun, uh, uh, we have uh, Srijit Mukherjee and we have Priya Karpaswamy here. Uh, let me start with uh, the movie Bhayanakam. Bhayanakam uh, is part of the Navarasa series of the director uh, uh, Sri Jairaj. Uh, this I think this is the sixth part of his Navarasa, Navarasa series. Uh, it's an adaptation of two chapters from Tagari Shivashankara Pillai's epic Malayalam novel Kair. In 1999, Jairaj started his with his nine film series Project Navarasa with Karunam followed by Shantam. Shantam won the National Film Award for the Best Features Film. Payanagam is released in 2017 as the part six of the Navarasa series. Jairaj is also Golden Peacock Award winner at IFI. This story is set in Kutanad and its backwaters in central Kerala during World War II and revolves around the life of a postman who delivers money orders at homes of those who have joined the army. The main protagonist of the movie is a postman. That's a, uh, the postman is a unique symbol, a universal symbol which is accepted everywhere as a, a messenger. And this uh, main protagonist is uh, portrayed by none, none other than Sri Renji Panikar, who is an acclaimed uh, director acclaimed uh, writer, uh, producer, and uh, uh, he is a journalist also. So we have with us Sri Ranji Panikar also. Directed by Kamakhi Narayan Singh, Bhor is a film which revolves around the plight of a poor girl named Buthini from Bihar's Mushar com community and her struggle to get her basic right for education and sanitation. Kamakhi Narayan Singh was with TV channel uh, Travel XP. He is currently working in Travel XP as well as a creative director. He has lived and shot travel and shot social documentaries in over 40 countries. The film was also seen by Goa's uh, Honorable Governor Sri Mithila Sinha yesterday. Uh, uh, the direction and screenplay of Dhapa, a Marathi film, is done by Sri Nipun Avinash Dharmadhikari, who has a theatre background. Children's play on environmental issues with messages on Jesus Christ and San Tukaram during the Ganesh Chaturthi festival turns into a flashpoint between elders and children. Eventually, the children decide to take matters in their own hands and find answers through their play. Dharma has won, uh, I'm sorry, Thappa has won the National Award for Best Feature Film on National Integration this year. The film is going to be screened in theatres today. Uma, a Bengali film, uh, written and directed by Sri Srijit Mukherjee is the story of a young girl who is fighting with a terminal disease, a father who is struggling to make her daughter's dream come true, and about the director who whose uh, past haunts him. This movie is real adaptation of a, a real event of Ivan Leversage who wanted to see Christmas uh, before he uh, he was uh, diagnosed with a terminal disease. Baram, a Tamil movie directed and produced by Priya Karpuswami. Priya, I'm sorry, Priya Krishnaswamy uh, revolves around Karpuswamy, a widowed night watchman and his relations with his sons in the last time of his life. Priya Krishnaswamy, an FTI alumni, edited films like Bombay Boys and Bhopal Express. She made her directorial debut with Gangu Bai, a Bollywood drama produced by NFDC of India in 2013. Let's start our conversation today with uh, Sri Jairaj. Sir, uh, this Navarasa series is a very unique thing in Indian cinema. Uh, can you uh, brief our audience about your uh, main motivation behind this series and uh, with respect to this particular movie, Payanaka? Good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Ifi. I think. Uh, from 96 onwards, I am participating in most of the Indian panorama. And uh, now I would like to say something about my films uh, regarding Navarasa series. Because Kairanam I made in 2000. Uh, that's an expression of uh, tragic loneliness of old age. I got uh, Golden Peacock in, in that film. and. Um, while doing this, this is an expression of social uh, impact also. Not the, uh, in the case of Kairunam, that is, I told you, like uh, old age isolation. In Shandam 2001, that's about uh, political violence happening in Kerala. And uh, 
അത്ഭുതം ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് അബൌട്ട് യുത്തനേഷ്യ ഫിസിഷ്യൻ അസിസ്റ്റഡ് സൂയിസൈഡ് ആൻഡ് വീരം ദാറ്റ് വാസ് ട്രാജഡി ഓഫ് അംബീഷൻ മാക് ബത്ത് ഐ മേഡ് ടു ഇയേഴ്സ് ബിഫോർ ആൻഡ് ബി ബൽസ ദാറ്റ് വാസ് അബൌട്ട് ചൈൽഡ് സെക്ഷൽ അബ്യൂസ് ഐ മേഡ് ഇൻ ടു തൗസൻഡ് ഫോർ ആൻഡ് നൗ ഭയാനകം ഭയാനകം ഈസ് അബൌട്ട് സെക്കൻഡ് വേൾഡ് വാർ മേ ബി ദ ഇൻസിഡൻറ്റ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ഫസ്റ്റ് വേൾഡ് വാർ ആൻഡ് സെക്കൻഡ് വേൾഡ് വാർ ഐ തിങ്ക് മോർ ദാൻ സിക്സ് സിക്സ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ആൻഡ് ഫിഫ്റ്റി സോൾജിയേഴ്സ് ഡൈഡ് ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ദാറ്റ് സെക്കൻഡ് വേൾഡ് വാർ ഓൺലി ഫ്രം കുട്ടനാട് എല്ലോൺ കുട്ടനാട് ഇസ് എ പ്ലേസ് എ ബാക്ക് വാട്ടർ റിമോട്ട് വില്ലേജ് ഇൻ ആലപ്പി കേരള സോ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് നോട്ട് ഇൻ ദ ഹിസ്റ്ററി സോ ത്രൂ ദിസ് ഫിലിം വി ആർ ട്രൈങ് ടു സേ ദ ഇമ്പാക്ട് ഓഫ് വേൾഡ് വാർ through this postman through his money orders and uh, telegrams we are showing the impact of the tragedy of second world war without we are not showing any kind of war sequences and all so these are the expressions of society i am telling trying to telling through navrasa series i would like to do two more hasim and shringaram and i don't know when i am going to do that but still i am happy uh, the performance of uh, the postman i think uh, that was the ultimate of that film thank you so much thank you jera sir in malayalam movie industry there are only a handful of writers by whose name the movies are known and ranjit panikkar sir is on, on among that uh, elite category with this performance in bhayanagam a tantalizing performance he has transformed into a lead actor in the industry sir can you explain your transformation from a, a journalist writer to a bankable lead actor in malayalam industry thank you for squeezing me in, in into this space because this is for recognized and uh, renowned directors uh, i have no business to be here but he has been kind enough to bring me in and uh, provide me a seat here <coughs> the transformation from a writer director i don't think it's a transformation like i am i've been in the industry for the past 3 decades and it just happened that i became an actor it was by accident <laughs> sheer accident that and fortunately for me jairaj is uh, he happens to be a very close friend of mine we actually started our pursuit in the industry in the film field together long back and we have been treading to different tracks but he was kind enough to give me this uh, male i mean <laughs> lead character in this movie bhayanagam and it was a very tough task because jairaj is a very accomplished and renowned director with a lot of accolades to his credit and for me i was i am just uh, beginning my episode uh, my my career as a serious uh, actor i mean kind of serious acting this is my first probably my first uh, task in a movie like this so i thank jairaj for his kind uh, words about my performance and thank you all i think many of you might have watched bhayanagam so thank you <laughs> thank you sir we bow down to your humbleness uh, to shri kamakya narayan singh this movie particular movie is having so so many unique aspects about it like live song recordings production design and costumes look very real so what are the technical aspects of this movie and uh, along with that the social implications of this movie can you just brief to our audience i studied social work in my college and then moved to media i did news for some time and then uh, worked with travel channel international travel channel now the thing was being a student of social work i had gone to the villages the rural areas and when i used to see films the films were made on set so the problem was it was not very realistic and 
my exposure to uh, world culture was I did uh, travel documentaries all over the world. So I always wanted to make real films. Realistics are done on sets. Real are done on real locations. Then I thought of doing a, a feature film. Then story. Since childhood, one community which always had put mark on my memory was Musars. They, uh, I, or I was born and brought up in Assam, but originally from Bihar. So all my summer vacations were in Bihar. So this Musahar community, uh, they live in the plains. So it is not that they live in Himalaya that the development has not reached <coughs> them. They live in the plain near the uh, cities. But they are simple people, poor people. But they do not cry for their poverty. They are happy. They, uh, they, they are honest people. So we wanted to make an honest story with honest people in the background. So, chose Musars, then went to the village where uh, I used to go in my childhood. So, development has come and they are now, they have a good house. And I wanted to show the way they used to live when I was a child. So, went more into interiors in Bihar, in Nalanda district. And convinced those people that we would like to come and stay at your place for two months. And I, in Bollywood, I spoke to people there, I wanted the actors, the the established actor to come and be with us for two months in the village. They had their own uh, commitment, so they could not. So we got the new faces because people can think that they are Musars. So uh, we got the real faces, uh, the new actors. And we took them to the village, kept them for two months there, uh, made them work with the, uh, uh, the villagers, eat the way the local eat. And then I was talking to a few costume designers in uh, our industry. So they said, Ki, kuch nahi, chai ka pani. we'll take chai ka pani and make the uh, cloth old. So I said, no, this is not the way I work. I told them that, let's go to the village. Let's exchange the clothes. So we exchanged the clothes of the villagers. And we got the old clothes from them and give, gave them new clothes. So that even they had, uh, these people, they buy one cloth in a year. So this uh, Musar, so even they had happiness. So spreading happiness is also one thing we wanted to do through our film. So we gave uh, new clothes to them and took their old clothes and started wearing, then started working with them. So the body language changed. And this took two months time. Few people, they, they were here and then uh, there were few characters who were not allowed to even take bath for two months. Then after we thought of the song, there was a song in the uh, the story demanded a song in the film because they get money and they wanted to spend that money because Musar had had not seen that much money because once uh, yeah. so we thought of recording it live again went to the music directors and asked them that we want to do a live music and that too in a rural area of Bihar and now Bihar if people listen about Bihar so half of the technician they'll say no 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 I'll not go to Bihar. So maybe Patna I will go, not to the villages. I said, no, you'll have to come to villages. And one of the top music directors. See, I come from news industry, so uh, means I had a background of news industry, so I could reach to any one of them. So they said, he said, no, 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 I cannot, I cannot land in uh, the village because it will be difficult for me. Then I got someone who was new, uh, Gulraj Singh. So Gulraj Singh and uh, uh, <coughs> Manoj Yadav has written this, uh, the song. And they agreed to, they will come to the village and they'll perform live. So, and we went to a Musahar Toli. So, where the Musahar sleeps. I, I don't think so. There must be any perform. Koi naach nahi hua hoga pe. To pehli baar is gao mein, ye kahani ka part bhi. And I feel that that was the true also, truth also. That first time a dancer must have danced in a Musahar village. Musahar, Musahar Toli, in the Musahar community. So, uh, we took and we recorded live. So now, after the music director, it was sound designer. Who will design your sound? So I spoke to a few international sound designers. They were like, you know, you'll need at least, uh, while you are recording the song, you'll need at least for sound security 30 to 40 people. And how do I get? And that too, they need to be trained. So I said, I can't get to train people in villages to uh, do sound security. So then I met Manas Chaudhary. Uh, he has done a uh, sports film called Chakde India and all. So he had an experience of dealing this kind of sound. So he said, I'll do it. And honestly, 
on the sixth, uh, when we started uh, singing, when we started the performance, on the sixth take was the final take for us while recording. And that's a live sound recorded in the film, the live song, orchestrated song recorded in the film. So we have tried to make the film look as real as it could be. And if you see the film, it will be great. And thank you. Thank you so much. We have here um, uh, the director uh, of the uh, Marathi film Thapa, Sri Nipun Avinash Dharmakadigari. He has weaved a, a beautiful social message through the innocence of children. So can you brief about your film and So uh, firstly, good morning, everybody. Thapa is a film which is set in Pune. I am from Pune. I've uh, lived my life over there, all my life till now. And uh, if you all know, uh, Ganesh Festival is a huge part of the city's culture. And there are many cultural programs right uh, down in everybody's societies as well. So uh, these days, we are now experiencing uh, an increase of gate gated communities, uh, in Pune especially. So uh, each of these gated communities of these five, six buildings, they are a world in itself. And they have their own Ganesh Festival. And one uh, woman in the society called Anuradha, she works with children. And she is uh, directing plays, writing plays for children for the Ganesh Festival every year, uh, with some kind of a social message imbibed in them. Uh, the previous year, she had made uh, a play on the life of Sant Nyaneshwar. This year, she decides to make a play uh, which will t talk more about the environmental issues that we are facing. And in that play, she uh, to give out the message, she uh, uh, takes the help of many characters which the children will like and the adults too. So something like walking trees or a talking monkey. Then they have the uh, messages of Sant Tukaram and Jesus Christ. And the play is going very well. Everybody is enjoying. And uh, a Hindu right-wing group comes and disrupts uh, the play that, that takes place in the uh, society, saying that Jesus Christ can't be a part of a Ganesh festival play. And what happens later is how, how the children deal with it. Because as far as I remember, when I was in school, uh, unity and diversity was, the, was a major topic for essay writing. And uh, when we are taught these idealistic values in school on, uh, at one hand, and when you are made to face the harsh realities that are taking place in the society, how the children come to terms with it, because they don't understand that they are given a holiday for Christmas in school. Most of them go to convent schools. Their parents are proud that our children go to English medium convent schools. And um, uh, these are the same parents who bow down to uh, the uh, these, um, what do you say, uh, these moral police, if at all we can call them, uh, they bow down to their pressures. And how they come to terms with it and they form their own opinion and they decide to go ahead with their own play is the film. We have with us now uh, Mr. Srijit Mukherjee, National Award winning director, actor and screenwriter. Uh, sir, this uh, particular movie, Uma, has uh, different layers of uh, uh, storytelling, like um, of that of human courage and inspiration, uh, of that of the images connected with Durga Puja and the beautiful story behind uh, filmmaking in India. So can you give a brief about uh, your film? Yes, so uh, this film is inspired by this real incident which happened in uh, a, sm a small town called St. George in Canada. Uh, there was this terminally ill child called Evan uh, Levisage who uh, wanted to see Christmas, uh, experience Christmas, but the doctor said that uh, he will not survive till December. So the townsfolk, they came together and they uh, kind of orchestrated a false Christmas for the child uh, with false snow. Uh, like uh, using the machines which uh, filmmakers use to create snow. And uh, they had reindeer and uh, the entire town kind of put the lights. And so it was a very, very inspiring incident. And it was something which I came across in a news article in 2015. Uh, it was titled, The Boy Who Moved Christmas. So I was literally moved to tears when I uh, read that because in this day and age of violence and intolerance, such an act of altruism and humanity was something which I thought was, uh, it merited reaching out to a larger audience. So I decided to adapt it uh, in a different cultural context, that of my homeland, Bengal, where 
Durga Puja is uh, the biggest festival. So I changed Christmas to Durga Puja and uh, uh, using the metaphor of Goddess Durga, I, I made the boy into a girl called Uma, which is another name for the goddess. And how uh, Uma's father uh, employs an out-of-work filmmaker to create a false Durga Puja uh, for the last wish of, of the child, uh, to sort of honor the last wish of the child and the various obstacles the filmmaker faces. Because Durga Puja, uh, those who are aware, uh, is a huge festival. It kind of, it's, it's much bigger than a small uh, town Christmas in terms of scale and uh, participation. So. So how he manages to pull it off is uh, it forms the crux of the story. So uh, that is the film in a nutshell. And now we have with, with us Priya Krishnaswamy uh, with her movie Baram. Uh, she is an FT alumni. Uh, Madam, uh, the stage is yours. Uh, you can uh, give a brief about your film. Thank you. So Baram means the burden <clears throat> and uh, it's based on a true story. <clears throat> Actually, what happened was in, after I made Gangu Bai in 2012, and Gangu was a fantasy film set against the fashion industry in Bombay. It was very big. Um, I began to read online news about, uh, and it kind of struck me. I, I wasn't looking for this news. What happens in Tamil Nadu, in rural Tamil Nadu, and I was blown away, is there's this thing called Talai Kutal, which means a head bath. And I grew up with my grandmother, and we used to have a head bath. Every Deepavali, it was a big deal. Yenne techi, you know, all that would happen. And what was happening in Tamil Nadu was that elderly infirm parents were being dispatched with a cold water head bath and copious amounts of tender coconut water. And they were being killed by their own children. And this was something that had social sanction. They were traditional killers. It was done free. And I didn't believe it because it was just online news, it was Tehelka, and it was, it was not in the mainstream media at all. Until I saw Satyamev Jayate, Amir Khan's, and he foregrounded this story in one episode on aging. With this, um, with the journalist who actually broke the story. So I thought, let's make a documentary on it, because it was incredible. I had n I'm from Tamil Nadu. I'm, uh, I'm a Tamil, I'm not from Tamil. And I'd never heard of this. So I said, let's try and make a documentary. So I went to the area, I'm not going to name it, where the first case broke in the press. And it was a nephew who had gone away to Chennai and came back and discovered his uncle had died after a hip fracture. Eight days, within eight days of that accident, he died. So when he went to the funeral, somebody told him this had happened. So he set out to find. So this is what Baram was about. It's based on true events. And basically what I did was I just collated a lot of, it's incredible, I couldn't believe. And I have a, I have a you know, I, I, I'm listening to all these stories, I haven't seen these films, and they're all extraordinary imaginations, and this is, and it's all about humanity. And I really believe, I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, I'm a granddaughter, and I really believe that, uh, I've done a lot of work with bonded labor, for instance, in, in Telangana and Andhra. One person changes it. One person changes it. And I cannot believe that we've lost our humanity to this extent. The, the breakdown of the joint family is a big problem. It's a big... And when we lose out on a generation before, a generation before that, we lose out on kindness, gentleness, wisdom. We lose out on culture, khana pina. We just lose. I mean, we, we just... You, and you can't survive as an island. It's just not possible. So I was just very moved by this story. And I was very moved by this man who thought that he should tell this story. So that's what the film's about. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Uh, now the stage is open to questions from the press. Do you said that culture is changing, lifestyle is changing. Uh, do you think uh, the film uh, can uh, guide the people or uh, with the films uh, this, uh, you can bring those uh, old, this, our culture back? Do you think people will, uh, you know? Let me, um, okay, so the film was seen yesterday, let's say. I had a bunch of kids who are studying cinema mostly who came up and said, we've never heard this story and we moved to tears. I think the reach of a film depends on its publicity and marketing. Let's be honest about that. 
But having said that, I know that I have, and ha I know people who have been moved by films that nobody has heard about. So I think cinema has a huge, um, definitely a huge, the possibility of a huge impact. Social message, I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. It depends on how you package the social message, yeah? We've, we've been brought up, India is a, is a country that has a, a great tradition of uh, social messaging via mainstream media. So we have, I think it's possible. The one thing I did want to say was that what began as a tradition and for free is now a business and involves brokers and commissions and, you know, it's negotiable and we can talk about a price. The other thing I wanted to say was this is very interesting. So when we talk about cultural messaging, this is a country that wants sons. Yeah, we want sons. Guess who does the murder? It's the son and the daughter-in-law. Why? Because uh, a son is my son till he gets him a wife, you know. But women are culturally taboo from taking care of ill men, to change a bedpan, to do that. It's just not in our culture. We just don't do that. Because this, so this, this cross thing is it's very difficult to negotiate. And also too many jobs. Everyone's working. Nobody's there to take care of kids. Uh, to take care of old people is impossible. There's no money. How do you deal with illness? We don't have the social infrastructure. We don't have roads, man. If you break your hip and you go to a village hospital, they don't have an x-ray facility. This, it's a systemic failure. And that systemic failure has infiltrated the family. So when you are faced in a film, no matter how, you know, it's okay, you're, you've seen it at Ify. Now, how are we going to bring it out? Into, we have no clue how we're going to bring it out. Is it going to go online? We don't know. But it will definitely... It's a viral thing, now. Today it's like, it's very difficult to contain a film. It will come out, one level. First of all, congratulations for your brilliant acting in Bayanagam. Thank as, you. As Sri Vinod Kumar already explained, you started your career as a journalist, then turned as a celebrated scriptwriter, director, producer, and you also acted in many small roles in some of the films. What motivated, to, what motivated you to give more time for acting? That is the first question. And then the second question, how difficult it was to play the role of a disabled postman, postman in Fayanagar? My writing career almost came to an end when I switched to journalism again in uh, 2008. I was editing a newspaper and I was almost out of the industry for about six, seven years. I was not doing anything. My last. The movie I wrote last was in 2011. It didn't do well also. And at, by 2008, I was editing a newspaper and I was busy with it. With the launching of a newspaper and editing a newspaper was a tough task for me. It was taking all my time. And I was not keen about uh, writing movies at that time. Then I was invited to do a cameo in one film by a friend of mine. And uh, again, somebody happened to meet me there, a new and wise writer, happened to meet me at the sets and he said, uh, I would uh, like to like you to do a role in my movie, which is, uh, that was his debut. So he gave me a role in that, which happened to be uh, a leading character in that. And that did well in the theatres and I was by accident, as I suggested, uh, I was accepted as an actor. From then on, I was busy <laughs> as an actor that I never had time to, um, though I wanted to, I, because I have promised to write one movie for my son himself. So uh, I was not able to do it because I've been busy acting. And Bhayanagam, like I said, we are very close friends. We've been uh, in the industry for so many years we started together and Jairaj when he thought about casting me in the movie Bhayanagam I was scared because it was a big challenge and portraying it was basically tough because we had I had to walk the terrains of Kutunad which is totally uneven and muddy and uh, marsh like and I had to do a, like I had to do my uh, the postman walks a lot he has to go to the interiors of Kutunad, which is totally backwaters and rivers. So I had to row a boat. And walking was very difficult because it was uh, like, it was uh, the, the postman supposed to have had a knee injury during his uh, army days. So 
I had to walk, put my whole weight on one leg and walk with the crutches. So that was difficult, but I think it paid off because it looked convincing, is what I am told. So I think it was convincing. Mr. Jairaj, uh, you got the Golden Peacock here in 2000 for your Navarasam series movie, Karunam. And this year, your Bhayanagam got the National Award for the Best Director. And my question is that uh, you choose this story from the epic novel Choir by the great Nyanabid Award writer Tagadi Shivashankar Pillai. What made you to choose that subject, that story for this? Please explain. Yeah, I think during my, uh, I was working with director better than veteran. Uh, maybe early 90s. Um, I happened to hear the story, incident of this postman, Mr. John Paul, scriptwriter. He only suggested me there's a story, there's a movie in it. Because uh, in the beginning days, postman is coming to the village as a symbol of prosperity. And uh, once Second World War starts, he is coming and becoming, transforming as an omen of death. So he is coming to every home uh, with telegrams. And I uh, more than 650 soldiers from Kutanad alone. So because of poverty, they joined in, in army. And they were somewhere in the world fighting for someone. So only because of poverty, they are all joined the army. Still, British, they used to, you know, um, take youngsters to the army again. And uh, the postman is a, um, a real, uh, he participated in First World War, and uh, he knows what, uh, what is real war is, and he's a victim also. And uh, while he's coming to the, just before the uh, Second World War time, and the, everything is beautiful and everything is they are all expecting postman's arrival and this particular story is changing all of a sudden and we are representing through rain we are not showing at all any war incident any you know gun sound uh, nothing we are showing at all through the rain effect of rain we are uh, showing the impact of uh, war and uh, through the telegrams and the presence of postman we are giving the maximum uh, pain and tragedy of Second World War. So, after seeing the film, you will definitely feel, you know, something stuck somewhere. And uh, you will be, you know, experience the real feel of war. And without showing any soldier, we are telling the story. That was the, um, you know, biggest part. And that was the interesting part for me to do this movie. That time while, uh, you know, um, during my assistant director time, uh, he suggested me this, there's a movie in it. I tried a lot of, um, I think in 2000 after Karunam, I tried to do this movie. That time it was very difficult because Kutanad is fully with 11 kV li electric lines and all kind of things. It's very difficult to recreate the period, 1920s. So now it's easy because of the, you know, a lot of VFX possibilities are there. So we can recreate the uh, entire uh, Kutanad in that particular era. And uh, one more thing, you know, I want two color pattern because in the beginning they are all with the colors because the beauty of Kutanad is very, very um, out, you know, thrilling. And the second part, the total color is not there, but this is not black and white all the second part when the war is started. And uh, it is coming just before the, uh, you know, desaturated state of color. I think we maintain that mood throughout even Nikhil also sitting here, he got the National Award for that movie. And uh, that challenge, I think during the last 30 years, I was trying to do this movie, different, different time, and this is an opportunity to do, complete the movie. And very happy, and uh, still now people are asking me, 650 soldiers from Kotanad alone died in, during Second World War, because that's not in the history. Yeah, well, uh, Sometimes uh, Mr. N.G. Panikar also wrote a script for you in your earlier de uh, days as a director. Um, I think <laughs> it is the name I Akasha Gota Resulta. I wrote, wrote a screenplay for him. Yeah. Are you confident to what made you to uh, give this lead role for him as an actor? I want, I always looking for, even in the case of different movies I directed earlier, even Otal, 
ദേ ഷാർ എ ലോഡ് ഓഫ് ഫിലിംസ് ഇൻ കളിയാട്ടം ലോഡ് ഓഫ് യുനോ ഡയറക്ടേഴ്സ് ആക്റ്റഡ് ഇൻ മൈ മൂവി ഫുട്ബോൾ പ്ലേയേഴ്സ് ആക്റ്റഡ് ഇൻ മൂവി ഐ എം വിജയൻ ലൈക്ക് ബിക്കോസ് ഐ എം ഓൾവേസ് ലുക്കിംഗ് ഫോർ അപ്പിയറൻസ് അലോൺ ബിക്കോസ് ഐ വാണ്ട് എ പോസ്റ്റ് മാൻ ഹു ഇസ് ഹാവിങ് യുനോ ഈസ് ഇൻ ദ ബിഗിനിങ് ഹീസ് വെരി യുനോ ഹെൽത്തി കൈൻഡ് ബട്ട് അറ്റ് ദ സെയിം ടൈം ഹീസ് ഡിസേബിൾഡ് ബട്ട് ഹീ ഹെൽത്തി ഇൻ ഓഫ് ലൈക്ക് എ സോൾജർ ബട്ട് ദ സെക്കൻഡ് പാർട്ട് ഹീ ഇസ് ഗെറ്റിംഗ് യുനോ ലിറ്റ് മോർ ഡിക്കേഡ് ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് സെൻസ് മേ ബി disability is affecting him more so that transformation is needed for me and uh, with more physical and uh, i like his masculine uh, face and uh, you know features i am always looking for that for the character he is right a question for mr shrijit mukaji sir um uh, as a national award winner when you won the award now does it create more pressure raise expectations or does it uh, create more opportunities and opens more doors both actually uh, uh, when i pitch for new films uh, new projects uh, that national award winning uh, prefix uh, it does give me an audience uh, but that audience is maybe for the first 5 minutes after which the merit of the pitch has to take over and as far as the pressure is concerned yes uh, uh, actually my films also commercially do very well so it's kind of a double pressure because you have the pressure of performing at the box office as well as at the festival circuit so that uh, that balancing act is something which does create a bit of pressure but uh, i try not to think about it which is i guess the only way to tackle it uh, specifically for you mr kamakya but any of you other directors also could answer you uh, chose uh, live action uh, what are your views on uh, you know special effects and cgi which you know more there's more use of that now in films uh, uh, what are your views or if any of the other directors would like to come in it's a good thing a form of it's a good thing so if any story demands it's a good thing uh, this story i wanted to make it real so that's why i did not but yeah art has different forms so you need everything in the art thank you So the most common point in all the stories is about empathy right i mean i heard about your story and it's about the empathy uh, my question is this that do you think as a society now in this era are we all losing the empathy and are we uh, are we not able to register with our emotions somewhere have we are we not in touch with uh, ourselves because the whole thing is so dynamic we have somewhere lost the essence do you think that it's the question to all of you so this is uh, we are i think uh, we are all doing for the new generation because i had a lot of experience while well, because i am studying uh, you know 60s to 2018 i have a span of saigal to air roman because of that's mm-hmm. a big span and in the music alone in the case of nostalgia alone and in the pain also because during 60s and 70s you know we are all you know suffering a lot so we have that uh, you know material and burn and pain in so we want to tell the younger generation what is the real human life is we don't want to get sympathy or empathy from someone else, but still we have to show the reality as he said going to a remote village now i came to know that there's a community is there poor people are there they are living uh, <coughs> you know very <coughs> happily that's a new news for me it's like that we have to show youngsters what is real life is because they are all clear they don't have any experience of life much because they are getting everything from the parents and they are getting knowledge through computers but still they must have the emotional experience that's that's what we are trying to give is it and i also think that there is a fair bit of detachment and isolation which is coming in which is there uh, somewhere as a subtext in her story as well and uh, i think that loneliness that isolation uh, the breakdown of the joint family so which is made us uh, if not selfish at least self centered and uh, technology is a very big you know so we have now uh, sadly and unfortunately we, we our world is slightly now shrinking to our mobile phones and our little world and so you are getting cut off from what is happening 
So it's such a great eye opener to listen to these fascinating stories uh, about places and people in the subcontinent of which we are also a part of. I mean, anthropologically, cro I mean, chronically, and obviously historically as well. But now, thanks to technology and the way uh, relationships are kind of uh, developing and kind of uh, isolating us, I think, yes, there is a fair bit of detachment which kind of needs to be addressed and we kind of address it in different ways. So I kind of uh, held on to a, a, a bit of uh, incredible altruism uh, which kind of gives us hope, which is, which is fantastic because uh, hope is all that we can do, you know, uh, apart from... Uh, so the, her story is, again, the other side of the spectrum. It's, it's tragedy, it's shocking. I was kind of totally <laughs> stunned to hear that. And, uh, in fact, I uh, am pitching for a film uh, now, currently, which deals with something very similar to her story. In the sense, uh, uh, you know, so there's this Pilbit National Park uh, in uh, near about UP border, where... Uh, they're leaving their elder, el elderly uh, whom they can't take care of because of poverty uh, to the reserve forest to be eaten up by tigers. And they're claiming compensation for that because the government has announced a compensation of any uh, family member which will be, uh, who will be killed by a tiger, the family will get a compensation. So I have a script around this which I'm pitching that how, you know, it's, it's become a racket. So you, you like leave your elderly the tiger kills him or her, and you kind of claim a compensation. So these are incidents which are happening in our country, which is which goes beyond the metro cities and the glitz and the glitter and the urban uh, comfort of our homes. And these stories are important stories. They need to be told because that is the complete India, if you are looking at it. I would like to uh, just mention that Emotions are also part of evolution. So uh, there is no definition of emotion. Every century, every part of history has uh, seen different kind of emotions. And with every human relationship, there is a different kind of emotion in every different part of century. Because we as a human being, as a human society, have changed and been part of uh, evolution. So the relationship will change, the dynamics of relationship will change, and emotions will be there, but in a different way. So emotion, we as a human being are emotional, so we'll always be emotional about something or other. But yes, uh, the definition, the, evil, um, uh, the evaluation uh, notes will change, but there will be emotions always. I'd like to say something. Um, I, I think it's a very valid question. I think we operate from fear now. And that fear is the f also a fear of vulnerability. So when you love, you're vulnerable. And we don't want to be. So when we were researching this story, we discovered there are 26 ways to kill. Documented. And it goes from mm, poison injections, pesticides. Jo, so, you know, the, the tablet used to kill pigs is mixed into tea and given to the old people. They are asking to be killed. They are they're killed with mud shoved into their throats. And they say, can you bring the mud from my own land? It will give peace to my soul. We, are, we operate from fear. We don't want to be connected. Because the, so now, you know, I'll tell you, we grew up in boarding schools because my parents lived abroad. It creates such a disconnect that you can never go back together again. Which is why I never put my kids in. I knew that you, a child never comes home. It, it, we, and it's, I, I, I don't know how to say this, but it's like that 26 ways to kill. For me, it was like a grayscale. Cinematically, it was a grayscale. You go from white to black, and in between, you go. And that's how, so we can calibrate how much fear and how much dissonance there is. We can, mathematically, we can calibrate. So I, so, I think that's the thing. So when we talk about selfishness, we talk about lack of money, or we talk about, it's all about fear, not wanting to be, and I find it odd, because when your child is seeing you do this, that child is going to absorb that as mother's milk and do it right back to you, worse. So how does fear then serve the purpose? The best thing to be is to be connected. And to say, I take the, va I take the responsibility for your well-being. You might be a stranger on the road, but you are, 
as important to my well-being as anybody in my family. That, I think, is the only way forward. Artistically also, no? She, she Absolutely. Knows. And uh, the stranger thing, so in the climax of Uma, strangers come together uh, and, and participate in that fake festival and make it look real for a child whom they don't know. We've done things for our friends, relatives, the, but the real test is, would you do it for someone you don't know? So that is a question which Uma deals with, and that is how the city of Kolkata comes alive again. And just to, sorry, yeah. just to add to all these points, I think, uh, of course, uh, we are going away uh, empathetically, but uh, at the same time, even that is being portrayed quite a lot. I, I think there is still some inherent kindness and humanity left in humans, which I feel uh, need to be portrayed more. Uh, and as she rightly said that cinema can be a great tool for a social cause if if we try and portray that more as well we might bring about a change as well you never know but you know having said that when i made gangona it was based on the premise of hope okay it was the kindness of strangers i've always said i built a career on the kindness of strangers and not being paid so <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when uh, people said to me, that's unbelievable. I said, dude, you have no clue. I came to Bombay. Literally, I was on my way to Dharamshala. Let's be a hippie types. And I got a job. And then I got another job. And I was 23 and I was editing films. And everything from the place I stayed to the money I got, the work I got, was all the kindness of strangers. Okay. When I put that into Gangu, they said, it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. There is a rejection yeah, yeah. that people can be... Or this thing I'm saying about bonded labor. One woman has freed 10 million children. One woman. One woman did it. Where is the story? Yeah. And you will still say, no, it's, an, it's not possible. It's not possible. Refrain is something I heard very, very uh, commonly when I was visiting many festivals with Uma. In New York, the lady asked that, so, but don't you think you've you known for your realistic or at least neo-realistic films, do you really think a city can do this for a child and the goon can have a change of heart? The right-wing fundamentalist uh, can actually uh, become a party to this 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 massive uh, festival, false uh, uh, festival. I said, I don't care. Even if 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 it's in, I mean, even if the chances of it happening is one percent, uh, I will rather celebrate that one person than be cynical about the ninety-nine exactly. percent. Exactly. I would rather talk about. Evan Levesage and, uh, and uh, Canada and the town of St. George, then talk of the various uh, Syrian refugees and the, and the children killed in uh, all parts of the world and uh, innocents bombed and all. So while I will not turn my face away, but I always have a choice that what will I celebrate? Exactly. What will I push? What will I portray? What will I, I will push and, and make it so on the face so that you know that the milk of human kindness is not yet dry. Exactly. Sir, I saw two of the movies. One was Jairam Sir's movie and was Priya Madam's movie. I just want to check in. Uh, how do you take these movies to more people to watch, have a memory, and do you have any road marketing plan or uh, any distribution ways to take the movies to more people? My movie is brand new. I've seen Bayanakam because I was on the National Awards jury and it's a beautiful film. Uh, so he would, he's got, but I, my film is brand new, yeah. The first print came out at Ify. So I'm, we are talk, we're in talks. We would like to do a theatrical. That's every filmmaker's dream. Uh, having said that, film ecosystems are different. So this is a very new kind of a cinema for Tamil cinema. It's very, very new. So we're going to have to see. Uh, we're hoping. We'll see what happens. But that's a question for him, actually. Yeah. I released in the commercial mainstream theatres and uh, ran for two weeks and uh, still waiting for the digital platform like Netflix and all kind of thing. But still, I am looking for some result from DFFI too. Because now every year there is a lot of films are coming out. In the case of Panorama, Indian Panorama selection and all kind of films. Previously, there was a chance to show in the Duridarshan and they will give some money. Mm. Nowadays, no. There is no market for Panorama cinema. And DFFI used to 
support for other festivals also mm. try to promote this film nowadays not so we have to find a person to exhibit you know internationally and at the same time marketing and all kind of um tragic mm. positions are there still so what i feel like if you have a platform like digital platform like netflix or something like that for the dffi for this kind of film and i think we can easily was to people they will watch movie if there is a possibility definitely they will see it <coughs> but yesterday you know i was talking to a film uh, sales representative who wanted a meeting on this film and he had a very interesting um, point of view he said you know as a filmmaker you want to just sell it, sell your film and get on to your next one recover whatever money he says you don't know the value of the product mm. it has a life span that you cannot imagine yeah. and the big mistake is to just sell outright sell everything yeah. and say okay let's move on he said sell it piecemeal see how so it will acquire a certain momentum it's the, see the whole thing is driven by pna i'm surprised bayanakam lasted only 2 weeks in the theater as i thought it was a much bigger mm, run i didn't know that so i think that what it's going to take finally is pna pna is expensive yeah. theatrical releases are expensive dude let's face it so how do you create a buzz he's right now let's say for instance um, you know i mean you 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 give posters to ifi or you give you know you want all of that merchandise to be used so that there's a visibility that you just got to amp up and see what happens basically and also it also is a matter of treatment i mean uh, some some films are intrinsically something for example uma it ran for 75 days it's a huge blockbuster not um, merely because uh, of the way it was uh, done it was it, it made it to panorama for a different aesthetics and it ran for 75 days for a totally different aesthetics so i i interacted with the audience and i tried to find out that what made it click so it's that fantasy of human kindness and this entire father daughter uh, a lot of single fathers came up and told me that thank you for portraying you know single fathers in that way that they can actually pull this off so it was a lot of wish fulfillment a lot of fantasy of the human kindness which kind of made it a uh, work at the in the commercial arena but again it is a different aesthetic which kind of clicks and if you can kind of address both then it has a better chance of actually you know reaching out to more people any more questions information and publicity while inaugurating the indian panorama was saying that they are taking so much of steps to see that this movies reach out to the more and more people so what you what all, all of you have to say on this so that is exactly what we were discussing right now in the sense that some films like uma was released way back and it had a successful commercial run before it was selected uh, whereas uh, priya's film for example is a brand new film so it is just got into if so now uh, we'll Uh, she'll uh, obviously look for uh, avenues, I guess, to kind of um, to reach out. And as Jairat sir said, that Netflix and other online uh, avenues are still open. And in today's day and age, I think that's a fantastic thing. That if you actually, so we'll have to face the uh, reality of theatrical runs slowly drying up and moving to online because that is something we can't escape. and which is where it's also a matter of great hope because there are lots of market forces which can prevent a film with a different sensibility like bhanakam which kind of will be let's say bullied out of halls by bigger more more uh, more commercially attainable features but then uh, it will always find its own audience uh, if it goes to netflix or an amazon and people can actually uh, more people can uh, you know save the uh, classic ironic you say that you know sujit because one never thought that a, a purely commercial space like an online and let's face it that space is also now highly competitive because there's so many films coming out and the the payback is getting less and less yes. but more platforms are coming out so uh, it's ironic that a purely commercial space is where i'm discovering alternative cinema <laughs> yes actually so a fantastic the kannada film which i found on netflix i've never heard of it it's a, it's a dharwad kannada so it's like really rustic and beautiful it's a story of a bald man have you seen it it's called ondu motte agade it's awesome and i've never heard of this guy he's become a superstar in kannada he's now acting and doing all kinds of really beautiful stuff 
because he made this one film which would i believe it became a big hit in canada i have never heard of it but outside of canada it has not traveled mm. and look i found it on netflix it's amazing look at the, what what's happening with documentaries dude yes amazing it's starting short of a revolution on the other hand i'll give you bengal's example so there's this space called nandan yes. in bengal which was uh, started off as a seat of alternate cinema it was uh, designed by satyajit ray and was inaugurated by satyajit ray and he was a very big part of the committee and uh, mrinal sen and all the masters were there nandan now screens full on commercial films and alternate cinema uh, uh, is crying foul and justified uh, in a justified manner because it was always you know kind of uh, portrayed as as the as a place where you have subsidized tickets where the government is supporting alternative cinema and that will be uh, shown but now it has become a seat of mostly populist cinema of which i am also guilty of uh, directing a few but uh, so the 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 wheel has changed now alternative cinema is more uh, you know on platforms like netflix on platforms like amazon hotstar hoi choi so so it's a revolution it's it's <laughs> but you know remember what yashran just did they made sui daga yes now sui daga is taking trying to take over the independent space yes. what else is it badai trying to badai Sri. but like that uh, panorama or dff has to find out a digital platform because it's approaching netflix and amazon is very difficult now because a lot of agents and we don't know where to how to go but nowadays for government for dff there should be a platform only for panorama films like netflix that's what my suggestion is uh, madam i have a question to you recently uh, i had uh, watched a tedx event in youtube which was on this particular topic of talai kutal mm. now you have you know the reach of tedx events it's global mm. and the millions of people watch it now seeing the comment sections uh, people are getting an impression that this this particular tradition is widely prevalent in south uh, india so what's your opinion of the prevalence geographical prevalence of this particular anti social that's a uh, damn good question because it also exists in the north it's called ganga lab they just go and dubow their old people and inform people in the ganga it happens i was just going to say this you know it has happened across cultures it happens in japanese culture it happens in eskimo culture it happens everywhere i made my first film uh, documentary was for um, the films division on ajmer sharif and wahan ja ke pata chala darga mein darga mein so i did a lost and found ka wo jo booth hota hai na ki you so you the pan was in fact one of the dops is here so you start with sunglasses and this that and the other and then you come down it's a child and it's it's a little girl and she's just been abandoned by her parents they don't want her back and because there are announcements and the kumbh mela mein hota hai sir it is the place to say i've lost my <laughs> belongings right it's i'm sorry so this is not uh, restricted to tamil nadu and it is not restricted to india one of the greatest uh, japanese films that i've ever seen in the fti was called the ballad, ballad of narayama it is a japanese film about a lovely family where in a village where the custom is that you must abandon your parents at age 70 on a mountain top with one week's ration and he loved his mother and he had no intention of doing this and they made him do it yeah no we abandon them in icu Ex <laughs> sir sir i'm telling you it is it is crazy it's across class caste culture background language there was cctv footage last year of this old man whose son owned a cancer hospital i mean that's how well to do they were so there he had he had a room and he had a nurse station in the room his own daughter comes in with her two teenage sons unfortunately chennai so i'm not getting away from that mm. and she got the nurse out and then she got this old man who was unconscious to put a thumb print on some property paper they vandalized the room they pulled the iv out and you could see the blood the nurse rushes 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 in with the doctor they realize something's afoot the family so it's just cctv footage the family runs with the two sons the woman runs cut to outside cctv the staff is racing after them the man died and the brother sued the sister for murder this is across that's what i'm saying you don't know it's not about money it's not it's just convenience which is being translated so i'm very sorry to say that this is uh, this is true it's across let's wind up this press conference with one last question and uh, after that we'll have a photo opportunity <coughs> this question is from me itself to jayraj sir this is slightly an offbeat question uh, this movie was released last year 
2017. It was uh, shot in the scenic Kutanad. Uh, you might have undergone uh, the feelings that the poster man had undergone. After that, the deluge of Kerala happened, and Kutanad is no more the same Kutanad. So, personally, I'm having mixed feelings. So, what's your uh, feelings on that after the deluge happened on your movie set? Yeah, I, I think in Kutanad, this is not the first time. Deluge. I made a film called Deluge because <laughs> that happened during uh, 2019. That was the biggest deluge, and this time again. So. Sorry, sorry, 1819. Okay. And uh, this time, I just completed a movie regarding Deluge, the recent one, and uh, that's called Raudram. I just finished, and uh, Renji acted in that. I think that's my expression. I'll show you, I'll tell you through that movie. That land is below. I'm, I'm born in Kutunad. It's a land below the sea level, actually. It's a very rare kind of a place where uh, it gets easily submerged during every <coughs> race, and it, it gets submerged twice a year as a ritual. So after we showed Bhayanagam, that whole place was submerged. All the houses were under the water. So it happens every year, almost every year. It's not this huge. Uh, it was not this huge like in 2018 floods, but people from Kutunada are experienced to living their life through such calamities. Thank you. That's the best way the director can answer a question. So we'll have a photo opportunity and uh, we'll dispose for the moment. Yeah, yeah. My maid, she's yeah. in Arie. 